Good morning, everyone. Brought in the whole team for this Facebook mm -hmm. Live. Okay, actually, Scott's not here. Scott's taking a little yeah. break. Uh, but we got the whole weather team here. I'm Lisa. Dylan. Jared. I was like, kind of pause, like you're going, I'll you're just like, take you it. You are Lisa. You can yes. introduce so, us. Yeah. Um, so, remember, you can watch this Facebook Live every weekday morning. We're on between 8 and 9. Uh, you can watch it anytime on your feed. You can also listen to this in the podcast platform as well, if that's your thing. Go to inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute. Also, you can find us on the Inform YouTube channel. So much to talk about. I have some news headlines, but the big story, the big headline is, is weather. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's why we're doing a little team effort here for you guys. How are you going to break it all down? What's happening today and then what's to come? Because yeah. it's already kind of, it's not happening here yet. No, no. I think I'll do a little TLDR and then I'll let okay, Dylan, go for it. Dylan it take over. So this morning <laughs> it's cold. Most of the day is going to be quiet. The breeze is going to pick up for us. So it's going to get windier later on today. It's already breezy this morning. And of course it doesn't feel very nice outside. Uh, so the breeze picks up. The snow really doesn't look like it'll move in Fargo-Moorhead surrounding area until I'm kind of leaning toward after the sun sets or okay. roughly about that time. So this evening, snow develops. we got wind and snow. Blizzard goes into effect during that time overnight into tomorrow. So toughest travel conditions, evening, overnight, tomorrow morning's commute. Snow winds down later on tomorrow. Highest amounts will be in the southern part of the valley. Some places like Wapaton may see over a half foot of snow. Fargo-Moorhead, we're in that two to five. And then uh, we are leaning toward northern part of the valley, not seeing much at all. Okay. So, but there will still be travel issues just with any bit of snow and that loose snow that we have and the winds. Friday, uh, I've been liking to joke around, it's the not too bad outside. <laughs> so it's gonna be frigid, but no wind. So that'll be the day I would tackle the driveway sidewalks. That's mm. what I will be doing. Okay. Cause it won't be blowing back in your face. So anyone that blows snow, shovels snow, it, it's not fun when it's blowing no. it right back in the driveway. So that's what I do. Wait till Friday. It's going to be cold. Just bundle up and do it then. And already you mentioned a couple times already some roads are closed to the mm -hmm. south of us because it's not happening here right now. I'm hoping I'm not taking your, 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 you know, stuff here, but yeah. right, it's snowing to the south. So some interstates are already closed. Yep. The toughest conditions will be in South Dakota, southern half of Minnesota. So I-29 is closed in South Dakota from our border with North Dakota down to Sioux Falls. And then I-90 west out of Sioux Falls a little ways is closed as well. So travel plans that, that way. Not gonna be fun here for the next 24, 48 hours for some. Okay, all right, thank you, Jared. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were kind of covering, well, not only were you standing outside when it was cold, so you know, was it cold? Oh my Jeez, God, it's rosy. so cold outside. It is, it is so cold. Like we were outside for like five minutes and I was trying to run into the car as quickly as possible after. It was, it's freezing cold outside. There's no doubt about that, so. Yeah, so don't be deceived, but you're looking out you know, the window. It, it's not snowing right now. It but is there are... so cold. Burn. We had wind chills 50 below in Devil's Lake this morning. Fargo is flirting at 40 below. Probably now 30 below. Yeah, it's cold. So if you're going to travel, although we're not recommending travel at all when it starts snowing later this afternoon, evening hours, going through the overnight. If you are going to be not listening to my advice, <laughs> pack an emergency kit. You don't want to get okay. cut, stranded. You don't want to be in these because not only is it going to be snowing and blowing, you're not going to be able to see anything. It's also going to be dangerously cold. So they're going to be stranded and it's 40 below with wind chill. That's literally deadly. So yeah. you've got to be careful about that. So. And there are so many headlines and alerts because you were kind of breaking that all down. We like to look at the, the colorful you know, yeah. radar, but just the colorful alerts that are in place right now, it's, it's crazy. It's kind of yep. hard to keep track of. Yeah, it is. I just posted uh, something on my Facebook page. You want to check that out. Um, you can find, hopefully you know where I am. If you can't, I'll comment and then you can find and click on my page. Otherwise, Jared just updated the article too. We have an inforum. Uh, so. Inform.com. We should talk about that again. Inform.com. You guys have a, a, a weather blog that you yeah. update consistently throughout the day because weather's yep. always changing and you guys are on top of it. So you can find, can you find that on the weather app as well, right? The Storm Tracker yeah, weather I think, app. Yeah, I think it's on the app. Inforum.com. Um, and of course, on air, you're going to be back. You're going to be on at 11, tracking it once again yep. as it moves. Yep. As it's quiet now, won't be quiet later. Okay. Da, 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 da. And as Jared said, before you go tomorrow morning, you'll be out there, kind of. Of course, us it will be. Yeah, maybe, every maybe we'll send Lisa really. out there. Should we send Lisa out there tomorrow? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'll be outside. It's be cold. But it'll be a much different picture tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, morning yeah. Versus... The snow will be blowing. Well, because it's similar. Well, probably actually have snow falling from the sky too tomorrow morning. So. It's going to be an ugly morning tomorrow. Tomorrow's commute is going to just suck. That's probably not the proper term, but it's going to be bad. So, That's the scientific term. Though, yeah, think, it's, it? it's going to be bad. Tomorrow morning's commute is going to be ugly for pretty much anywhere that sees snow tonight. So okay. be prepared for well, that. Well, we appreciate you yep. taking one for the team. Thank you, you Dylan. 
All right, weather the big story, obviously. But we want to update you on a, a couple of our uh, top news headlines as well. Sticking with weather, though, as we just start here, we're not alone in this. Uh, today, 150 million Americans across 38 states are on alert because of the massive storm sweeping the U.S., uh, already causing extensive travel delays, power outages. Uh, this is a big story. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is preparing for the blizzard as well. Uh, we've talked about this quite a bit this morning, but touched on it. Up to two feet of snow, at least 20 inches, um, historical amounts of snow in the Twin Cities expected. Uh, the governor has actually declared a peacetime emergency authorizing the National Guard for emergency relief. Uh, the, the governor also urging Minnesotans not to travel. If you do have to travel, take the same advice that Dylan just gave us. Make sure you have that uh, you know, safety kit in your car, you have a full tank of gas, that cell phone is charged up. Uh, the Minnesota DOT has more than 800 snow plows, 1,600 drivers already uh, preparing for this uh, big blast of winter weather. Uh, so be careful out there. And uh, if you don't have to head to the Twin Cities and you're watching me right now and you're thinking that's where you want to go over the next couple of days, it's a good idea to stay put. Uh, another big story that we're tracking for you, it's a breaking story because it's, it's happening right now. A manhunt is really intensifying uh, for a man who police say shot another man and killed him. They are looking for 45-year-old Nicholas Poitra right now. He is accused of fatally shooting 30-year-old Troyal Thumb inside Rindy's Bar in Cheyenne. In Cheyenne, North Dakota, of course, a small town. Uh, they're telling us now that Thumb got into a fight with Poitra after talking about a broken boxing machine. Uh, we're not really sure when it intensified, what happened that led to the shooting. Uh, we do know, though, at this point, um, new details, disturbing new details are coming out about this case. While we know that the search is still on for Poitra, uh, we're learning now that after Poitra shot them, he held seven people, including a child, at gunpoint. Uh, he then took off in a stolen SUV. Um, they ended up finding that, that car ditched at a, a farm where the person was not home, and we're hearing reports that he might have stolen several uh, firearms, guns, different things like that from inside that home. So, of course, that's why they're calling him armed and extremely dangerous. If you have any information on where he might be, please call police. Do not approach him. Uh, there are some reports that police believe he might, might have gotten some help, um, driven to another area, of course, um, serious consequences uh, for anyone involved in helping him at this point. So if you have any information, please call police on that uh, breaking story right now. Also, right now, Cass County Sheriff's Department deputies are looking for someone who was behind the wheel during a chase that started on Highway 81 near Gardner, North Dakota. Yesterday morning, deputies tried to pull over that car, but the driver sped off on I-29 heading south into Fargo. Um, now, deputies, they used those stop sticks where they were able to, you know, pop the vehicle's tires, did not stop the chase. Uh, in fact, deputies had to call off the chase once that vehicle got into the city of Fargo for safety reasons. Um, two hours later, Fargo police found that car. It had been ditched. The driver was nowhere to be found. Inside the car, investigators say they found various drug paraphernalia and stolen clothes as well inside. So we are still working to find out who that person is they're looking for and why uh, that chase happened and why they were trying to pull him over. We're also learning more information this morning about an incident near Mayville State University that forced a soft lockdown at all Mayville public schools. You may have heard about this. Neighbors tell us there was a police presence in the neighborhood right around noon yesterday. The Sheriff's Department says they got a call about someone with a mental health condition. They thought that person was inside a home in that neighborhood. Uh, so they made several attempts to contact that person. They were unsuccessful. Uh, eventually, authorities determined it was a medical mental health issue, and they cleared the scene shortly after that. Uh, school leaders say the incident had nothing to do with the schools there in Mayville, but they, they just did that soft lockdown as a precaution. Um, this one's getting a lot of debate as well. The ongoing discussion about whether or not you should be able to have chickens in your backyard in West Fargo, it's apparently back on the table, uh, partially due at least due to the high price of eggs right now. We're hearing right now that West Fargo City Commissioners have directed their team to draft an ordinance to allow people to house chickens in their backyard. We have not heard yet when they're going to take up that issue, but of course, a little bit of movement on that if you were thinking you wanted some chickens in your yard. Uh, a story from the Northern Valley. Right now, new developments in the Grand Forks area as that messy end of the Fufung project has begun to shed light on possibly more problems with the city's mayor, according to some people who live there. Uh, people in Grand Forks are now asking that Mayor Brandon Bochensky uh, resign. Uh, they're talking about his ties to the Grand Forks Region Economic Development Corporation, which is in charge of bringing businesses to the city. 
Um, some people are voicing their concerns that Bochensky's best interests, interests might not be with the city, but with the company. Being on the EDC's board of directors and the mayor of the city means Bochensky gets to bring the company's proposals in front of the city council, a council that he has a vote on. Uh, Bochensky has been previously asked to step down from either position, but he has yet to do so. So we're going to continue to track that story for you. A big uh, headline for you as well, President Joe Biden um, is meeting with NATO allies today of the eastern flank following, of course, we covered this for you on First News and across all of our WDIY platforms. Um, he's wrapping up his four-day trip to Europe, which he started with his bold visit to Ukraine. But also, this was new this morning. Uh, we're now learning that Russia apparently carried out a failed test of intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of reaching the U.S. Uh, that missile is allegedly able to carry 10 warheads and potentially travel even farther and faster than old Russian designs. So a lot of talk about that, a lot of debate, um, and uh, we'll continue to, to track that and, and track the president's moves as well as he is uh, going to be talking today. Also want to remind you, Hot Mike with Dom Izzo is going to be on WDAY Extra this morning, 9 to 11. Of course, every day Dom has great guests uh, talking a lot about, we talked about Cody Mauk yesterday uh, and his prospects going to the NFL and where he'll go in the draft. You know, that's still going to be discussed today. 9 to 11, WDAY Extra on Inform.com. Talking about Inform.com, remember, it's a great time to get a subscription. 99 cents a month for your first three months. Uh, you can get an all-access pass to Inform.com. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to get that great deal. And like I mentioned, you can join us again here in a couple hours. We'll be back on the air with our 11 o'clock newscast. And then this afternoon, starting at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And every weekday morning, of course, 5 to 7, join us on First News right here on WDAY. Have a great day, everyone.